Hi guys, in this review I'll be checking out the new Apple Pie Rocket. This is an Android 13 AI box for CarPlay systems. Comes with 8 gigabyte of RAM, 128 mm. gigabyte of storage, HDMI output. It comes with the new Qualcomm 6490 chipset. So it comes with a brand new GPU as well. And it also has 5G support and Wi-Fi 6E. And overall, should just be one of the top AI boxes out there. So let's show you what's inside the box. So here's what you get inside the box. You get quite a lightweight paper user manual. You get the Apple Pie rocket itself. Quite common with some AI boxes releasing at the moment, you get a kind of data power cable. Should your CarPlay port not have sufficient enough power to charge the actual adapter. But if you don't need that, you get also a USB-A to USB-C cable with an adapter. So if you've got a more modern car, you can convert it to a USB-C to C. And Finally, you get a mini HDMI to full size HDMI adapter as well. Should you be plugging this into a TV system as well as an external display in the car? So, looking over the actual AI box itself, it's pretty much like a previous. AI box that we've seen. Casing is basically OEM off the shelf from some other manufacturer and they've put all the gubbins inside that does all the heavy lifting. So you get a removal tool as well in the box to get at the SIM card tray and inside here you can put in your 5G SIM if you're in Europe or Asia. Not quite sure about America and if that's supported with 5G but you've got your SIM card and also a TF card slot as well for localized data as well. Here is your USB-C port so you can actually power the adapter and over on this side is a mini HDMI socket so you can actually get this plug it into an external display in the car or into a TV display at home should you want to use this device for streaming media for example. Around the outside you've got some passive cooling air intake so you can actually keep this chipset cool. This I think is metal so that's going to heat up quite a bit once that chip gets running and then the inside here you've got some LEDs that you can hopefully illuminate in different colors. Okay so I'm going to get this set up on a internal CarPlay system, get all my accounts all loaded into it, run a few benchmarks, and then I'll see you in the car for a demo. Right, so we're in the Golf and we've got our Apple Pie Rocket here ready to go. I'm gonna be using just the USB-C to USB-A cable here. We're gonna plug into the USB-C on the Rocket end, and then we're gonna plug the USB-A into our CarPlay port, which is down below. Yes, we do wanna connect. All right, so we've got a Apple CarPlay connection issue. Okay, it found it and then disconnected again. As you can see, it starts to read it and then it completely loses its connection. I've got USB-A 12 volt adapter here. It should give it enough juice to power the actual device. So down here, I've got my 12 volt socket, which I'm gonna plug that adapter into. And then I'm gonna take this cable, I'm gonna plug that end into the 12 volt adapter, this end into the CarPlay port. If it can reach, I don't think it can even reach. A few moments later. I haven't got enough room. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a battery bank into this socket, and then I'm gonna plug this in, and then hope for the best. So let's plug this into the USB-C port. So that's now plugged in. We now should be powering from all the different cables. That's the first time it's detected as an Apple Pie rocket and we're going in. We'll probably have to do a reboot because of the screen resolution is different, but that just, just shows you that it does need additional power because this CPU is probably a little bit more beefier and it needs that power wattage that a five watt just doesn't supply. Newer modern cars probably won't have this issue because their USB-C ports are probably a lot more powered than the old USB-A ports are in a 2014 plus car that I've got. So I can now put that down. We're now into the main menu interface. So everything is running nice and rapid. You can see our eight cores are present here with 2.7 gigahertz. And even though I set this in the CarPuri display, it's reset this. So I think it has its own profile depending on uh, the system that it's plugged into. So for this, you can just literally uh, select whatever app you want shortcuts to. So we're gonna do our usual suite of test apps and get them all ready. So this is a really nice beefy CPU but it's really let down by its user interface. It does the job. Uh, it's very rapid and fast and smooth with this CPU running in the background, as long as you've got a nice responsive screen. But it's really old and dated now. Uh, Carlink it used something very similar and it's time to really push this UI a little bit more, make it nice and sexy. Just make them really nice looking and um, a little bit more intuitive than just regurgitating the same user interface. Really tired of seeing this now. So we've got all the preloaded apps that come pre loaded into the adapter you can actually 
go onto Google Play Store and download all additional apps, which is what I have done here with a few games, the device info and Geekbench. But you've got Waze, Netflix, pre-installed, Disney Plus, HBO Max. You've got your YouTube Music and you've got the Bluetooth Music, Contacts and Chrome. Browser, you've got Settings, which is going to basically be Android 13 settings. And from here you can connect to Wi-Fi hotspots if you've got one in the car, change wallpapers and things like that. Then you've got Apple Rocket Settings menu, which is kind of unique to the adapter itself. And from here you can have um, audio localization. You can use the actual car's GPS antenna. Right-hand drive, which I've turned on, which is why the side dock is on on the right hand side on the main menu at the moment uh widget we'll turn that on for now so i can show you what the widget screen looks like not quite sure what id3 display is bluetooth audio mode if you have any issues where it uses the bt transmission signal and it craps out and gives you really bad audio quality different display modes which is very similar to wireless carplay adapters what app you want to do when you boot up whether you want to boot delay uh, you can have an offset on touch if you have it displaying incorrectly which is quite nice to see you can hide the desktop icon and then check all the version numbers and everything like that so everything in the settings area is pretty much self-contained now you still got this floating button unfortunately you can't turn this off i would have liked to have seen that and this floating button will basically give you access to back split screen mode voice assistant toggle the currently running apps so you can actually like quit them all which i'll do that now and uh go home and that's going to take you back to the home. This is like your widget panel where you can actually fill it with contacts. We're currently playing media and a shortcut to maps. That will launch up Google Maps. We're in here super quick. It takes a little time for the content to download from the internet. And this is really responsive. You can do the GPS navigation. Just go to into town. northwest on stanmer avenue then turn left to stay on stanmer avenue so all this is nice and responsive really really nice and smooth thanks to the gpu and the cpu at work there and we're going to quit back to the home screen that's not an active tile unfortunately again a ui issue with this archaic ui interface let's go into the app screens and see how much and how quickly all these things launch up so we've seen maps super rapid let's go into youtube and that is super nice and quick we're currently signed into our test account and that is all really nice and smooth. Unfortunately, it still uses the DPI setting where it looks like a tablet and that's unfortunate, but let's just get some lip syncing and we can actually see how it looks on video. So we're about 300 milliseconds late on the audio sync. Wireless CarPlay dongles have slowly progressed over the years and we are now seeing makers. So the sync is just a little bit off as you saw in the Twit test video. It's roughly about 250, 300 milliseconds out on the audio, which is a little bit of a shame. It just shows you that you could have all the power in the world you can still have a little bit of problem with the audio being in sync oddly it's in sync on my car ride so i would say it might be different on your system and on my car system it's a little bit delayed it'll load up netflix <clears throat> That's in super quick again probably the quickest i've experienced and let's go and play back our usual clip the overtake on his entry created this spark in this tension between the two of us okay so that's good sync is a little bit better on netflix so you know it might be an app thing actually and it's on stereo which is good as well sounds good so that is netflix we load up spotify now again nice and quick in there really nice and smooth very very quick to navigate that sounds great, really nicely sounding there from Spotify within the app itself. I'm going to try wheel controls. That all sounds and looks perfect. Runs well, runs really well actually, and uh, I'm really liking how smooth everything's all running so far. So lastly, let's just check out VLC and a trailer. One must destroy. We are no Jedi. 
All right, that looks really, really good. Sync is a little bit better again than YouTube. Uh, sounds great, looks great, and uh, everything's really nice and responsive as well in VLC. Let's just do a quick high bitrate test. And I tried this on the Carpi Ride and it handled this really well. There's no artifacting down here, which normally happens on quite a few AI boxes. It normally falls over about here and it starts to pixelate. It hasn't done that. It's a little bit jerky, the frame rate, but that's I've not seen it any smoother on any other AI box that I've tested that file out on. Probably we let down by the 30 frames per second on this that's running at the moment why we're getting a bit jerkiness on the actual display here um, but again we've not i've not seen it any smoother okay so that's just general apps launching and generally very positive there we can do google what's the weather like today it's 52 and mostly cloudy. So that works all fine with the Google Assistant. Another thing with this is the LED light system. You can control the LED lights if you just want red. You can just set it red and set it green if you like and just have it constantly like that or you can have it go through the cycle through the different colors but if you've got a color scheme and you have this on show you can have that match your interior lighting as well there is disney plus as well you can actually launch i don't actually have an account with them at the moment but there is a new version available it does probably ask you to update uh, there isn't one available so you will have to sideload those and probably you might find that with hbo max as well and there is a new version of that too and that isn't available either on the store so both of those you would have to read get them from apk mirror sites and then they will continue to work Again. Right, so let's fire up the wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. So that uses Z-Link 5, which is a decent application for wirelessly connecting to the adapter. It also does wired mirroring, so we'll try that in a minute, but let's just find out how CarPlay runs first. So we're gonna connect to the Bluetooth adapter from the Rocket. So it's showing up here already, nice and quick. Gonna fire that. Okay, so we're in. Oddly launched uh, the Spotify in the app, which is weird. But uh, we're now in CarPlay, a little bit long, but I don't think that's gonna be down to the, the GPU, CPU there. It's gonna be more about the Wi-Fi connection. But CarPlay running here, it's presented nicely. There's not much artifacting at all that I can see for this. It's quite rapid. There's a little bit of a delay compared to some wireless adapters. It's not fully rapid, but it's doing the job of wireless CarPlay. We can uh, jiggle about a bit. You can see there's the slight delay that you get with wireless CarPlay. Um, it's not gonna be the best, but the fact it's an AI box and YouTube and Netflix as well, that's gonna be an advantage over just a small little wireless dongle that you can buy. We'll just try audio. Well, here we are back at the hot muggy streets of New York. Music sounds good. You can see the delay that you get on the, the almost a two to three second delay there on switches, but sounds good. I'm gonna try a track that I can test out the stereo-ness of it all. Okay, stereo separation is fine here as well on that audio. I do find that Siri is coming through on the Bluetooth channel, which normally doesn't happen on CarPlay, uh, especially on wireless dongles. So that might be a concern. Hey Siri, send an audio message to test. Go ahead. Hi, this is Anthony from carplaylive.com and this is an audio test using the Apple Pie Rocket on the CarPlay system and this is an audio test. So, audio does seem a little bit amplified. I didn't see a setting option to alter that, but at least it's working. But let's try a call. Hello? 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 So that's the calling delay there. So it's just slightly, probably one to two second delay, which is still okay. I think that'd be okay for discussions, but it's not the fastest that I've tested on wireless adapters and AI boxes. So that's CarPlay. Let's switch over to Android Auto. And we're in. So that's a little bit quicker than CarPlay, I believe. So we're into Android Auto. Resolution is a little bit lower. You can see a little bit of quality issue on the Spotify icon there and it, it is lagging a little bit. So I'd say performance on Android is uh, not the best that I've experienced. At least everything is correctly ratioed. It's not squashed as I've seen on some other AI boxes, but um, it's not as responsive as CarPlay is. All wheel controls work on Android Auto as well, but the one big issue for me is the quality isn't the best that I've seen for Android Auto, but the quality that is the best is just a wireless adapter. Going through software on an AI box isn't gonna give you the best result. So there seems to be a bug here. As soon as I go into for you section, the audio cancels out and then audio in the app stops working. 
the volume just bottoms out on my stereo and I have to turn the volume back up. So I'm not quite sure what that is. Maybe if you're an Android Auto user, you can let me know what actually that means. But generally it's okay. It's a little bit sluggish. Quality isn't the best that I've experienced, but it works at the end of the day and it works fairly well, but it isn't the quickest to, um, to operate than a wireless adapter does. Okay, we're gonna quit this out and try some mirroring. Now we're mirroring our phone. Nice post stock solution. So if I rotate the phone. Priced at the time. So I had that for a couple of years and then I decided to change that. Well, so again, it's a little bit laggy, but it really relies on the connection that you've got with the adapter and the internet as well. So you can see there's a slight lag there, something that's probably gonna be a bit more worrying. And I think personally, I would just use the YouTube app to stream the content instead, because there will be copyright right issues doing it from your phone. Android is going to be pretty much the same experience, but we will connect to that as well and see what that looks like. We need to use the Z-Link app again. Why don't you just use Google's own? It'd be so much easier. So let's download the Z-Link app. All right, so now we are connected. So not too bad. I'll say the frame rate's not brilliant. So Android, it's a little bit different, but um, quality is not there and it's a little bit laggy. So personally, I wouldn't be using this for mirroring. Okay, lastly, a bit of gaming, just to show you how well that works. The CPU, the GPU, because of the extra power behind it, it's way more responsive than um, all the other AI boxes that I've tried. Uh, enough for me to actually play this properly and actually not die for a while, because normally it would lag out slightly. I'm not very good right now, but you can see it's all nice and smooth. So this runs really nice and smooth and the actual touch input is a lot less laggy and actually games now actually become way more playable on this AI box. So that's Jetpack Joyride, plays really well. And Asphalt Lessons is a little bit of a cruncher when it's on these AI boxes, especially with the older CPU. Just navigating the menus is way, way, way smoother. Oh my God, just let me play the game. So that plays really well and really nice and smooth. The previous generation of the CPUs which wouldn't make it this smooth and all the particles and stuff is going on as well and it didn't really lag out that much at all really so that's really nice to see. Gaming on this is going to be an absolute dream I think. But let's get a controller plugged in and see how well that looks and runs. So we've got our Xbox controller here and we're going to get this plugged in to the Bluetooth settings. We're going to pair up a new device, we're going to hold that down and get pairing and that should come up on here any second and now we're connected. So beam actually go back and then you can use the sticks to navigate the menus here. Hey! So that works with the controller, happy days. And the same could be done with a Bluetooth remote, should you wanna use a remote or don't have a touch screen interface to work with your CarPlay system. I'll quickly set up a HDMI cable, plugging in the mini cable into the AI box here. This is a dedicated cable, you don't get that with this system, but I'm gonna plug this into a HDMI display. So imagine this is your car stereo, HDMI screens in the back headrests of a car, for example and then there you have it. So that's the display running there. I'll just do a quick Netflix on it. Created this spark and this tension between the two of us. So I think that looks good on an external display. And I would now cut to how it looks like on a bigger TV screen. Generally, it should just work perfectly once you've got it connected to an HDMI display. And again, with a Bluetooth controller, you can then use Xbox or PlayStation controllers with it to play certain video games with it too. So I think I've just showed you everything there is that to learn from this AI box. So the Explotter Apple Pie Rocket retails for $389. It's definitely not cheap. 
compared to the other options that are out there, but you really are getting what you pay for with this AI box in that you're getting way more better performance than any other AI boxes that are out there at the moment. Sure, we will see more coming in the future from other brands, but right now, this is the fastest one you can get right now for Apple CarPlay devices. The CPU is equivalent of a Samsung Galaxy S21, I believe. So you're gonna get a very good performer in terms of launching apps, general multitasking and playing games on it as well. It's gonna absolutely blitz through those compared to the current older generation of AI boxes that are currently available. So it really is probably worth its money should you have the budget to afford it. This is like the base level if you really want to en enjoy your AI box and your CarPlay system. This is the kind of hardware and power that should be in these boxes. But the one thing that's really disappointing is its UI interface. Now, there are a few things that you can do here and I will go into that on a separate video. So look out for a video on launcher customization on an AI box. I'll have a video on that out probably next year. Again, there are some issues with Android Auto in its terms of display and its quality a little bit. So for Android Auto users, if you're gonna use this for wireless Android Auto, then I would be a little bit hesitant. It's not the best, but majority of apps you should be running off AI box itself uh, to get a much more richer and faster experience. But overall, very impressive AI box from Explotter here. It's probably the only decent AI box you should be getting right now if you can afford it. It does have 5G. I don't have 5G in this area, so I can't really test that. Check out my links down below if you'd like to learn more about it and also support the channel and buy yourself one directly from their store. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. Give us a thumbs up if it has, and let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions specifically about this Apple Pie Rocket, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.